In this video, I'll be giving you my first impressions of the Sunday Keys iPad app. And when I say first impressions, I mean very first impressions. This is the first time I'm sitting down. I'm gonna open the app in a few moments here and try it out. So here we go. We got the rig all set up. Uh, I'll just click on the app. Just gonna open it up and it's open and it's active, right? I'm playing my MIDI keyboard, triggering all the sounds within the app. The very first thing I notice, the very first impression I have is how quick that is. Um, so right now the app is still open in the background, right? But let me go ahead and um, actually quit it out for you. I'm like, I'll, I will say, I'm like not the most competent iPad user. I don't use iPads very much, but now I quit the app. I'm gonna click on the app one more time. It's open again in like a couple seconds. And what I'm used to as someone who's a worship leader, tech director, I'm trying to equip my team with the best keyboard rig is we're using main stage, right? That's how we usually used to use Sunday sounds in the past. There's a lot of variables at play and it takes forever sometimes to just get main stage up and running. It takes closer to probably anywhere from 10 to 30 seconds, right? We're here, it's like, boom, three seconds. And, and everybody knows that iPads, especially if you get newer iPad Pros, uh, they're super fast and snappy, uh, especially with those new chips in them. So right off the bat, I'm very impressed that it only took about three seconds to just get the app open in producing sound. Okay, so now I just wanna kind of poke around, right? So I'm, I'm looking at the interface here again, uh, I'm a user who's familiar with the existing Sunday Keys template and main stage, and this looks very familiar. I feel like the same color coding of it, of the faders. So I'm just gonna go ahead and um, look on the left here, it looks like I've got my patch list. Uh, this is for a set list that's already been created here. That's pretty cool. Um, I'm just gonna go to Grand and Pads. That seems like it's a simple, simple little patch setting here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pull down my faders. So this one, this is the Sunday Keys Grand Piano. That's how it's labeled. Got my sustain pedal there. And you guys will, you'll definitely be able to tell I'm not a keys player. I can play some simple block chords. So the uh, Sunday Keys Grand, that's the first bank here within the patch. I'll turn that up. And then we've got some strings. Nice. And then we've got, what's this one, pad. Great for those altar calls. It's called the altar call pad different pad, and then we've got Felt Heart. I actually don't even really know what that, that that's called, but it sounds cool. Um, sweet, I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing them together, right? So this is one of the things I love about this app, especially for someone who's a piano volunteer. Maybe they are coming from more traditional piano background. They learned how to play off of a chord chart for the first time. And now we want them to be able to have these nice sounds, like a good worship piano sound, as well as some pads in the background. Um, and we wanna make it easy for them to, to mix them together. I don't see how it gets really any more intuitive than this. So I can say, hey, um, go ahead for this song. I want you to you know, have piano be your main instrument, but bring in some of the pads. So. So we can easily fade it in. We can have, have that breathy pad as well. And then as I'm looking at the interface here, it looks like we've got just some different effects that we can bring in. Um, so it's very common to have kind of a reverb sound on your piano to kind of give it more space. Um, so let's see what happens here. I'll turn it off. Ooh, yeah, it's like so, it's so dry, right? Like there's no, it doesn't give the, the piano like it, you wanna make it sound almost like it's a piano in like a hall or something like that. It's very pleasing to the ear. I'll turn that back on. But let's say if I wanna turn it up, right? Okay, so I, I clicked on the effect and I can make it wet to dry. And I can actually, it looks like I can determine how much of the dry sound I want with like no reverb versus the wet sound with reverb. Um, and then there's other other settings here, high cut, low cut, all the typical settings I would want on uh, reverb if I was like mixing sound or something. Um, awesome, I can replace effect, that's cool. Wow, so I can go like click around to different effects I can put, so it's almost like, uh, uh, discard changes, I don't wanna change anything, but it's like I have a rack of effects for each of these channels, like it almost feels like I'm looking at a DAW or something where you can just throw on uh, different effects here. So if I keep playing, get delay, 
Ooh, that's cool. Okay, so we've got the delay. How would I go about uh, changing the tempo of the delay? Let's see here. I'm going to click on the effect itself. And we've got the, the output, the mix settings, the feedback. That's how long it's going to actually go for. Sounds ridiculous if you go like to 100%, so we'll bring it down here. The subdivision as well. Um, so we've got quarter, dotted eighths. I like dotted eights, and it's got ping pong mode, all these things. I'm just gonna go confirm there. I wanna save that setting. I'm looking, oh, right here, tempo. Right on the top center of the app, right? And this is literally my first imprint. Like, again, I've never used this app before. I'm like looking around. Found the tempo on the top. So now I can tap the tempo, right? So now if I, let's say I go really fast um, or slow, like every worship song is in the sacred tempo of 71.2. Wow, that's really slow. Okay, there we go. Um, right, so there's there's an easy way. If I'm doing delay effects, I can just tap the tempo in um, and get it to the right beat of the song. And I'm sure I can, you know, go ahead and, and save all those those settings too. Uh, yeah, there's like a save button down here. Um, if I went and press this save, it says snapshot saved. Oh, and there's like these different different snapshots. Wow. Okay, so. If I want to say, okay, I want to have a snapshot where I have lots of pads with it. Save. Snapshot two. Okay, so if I go to one, default, you'll see like no pads. Snapshot two, pads. It's almost like you have another layer of settings that you can quickly call up um, without having to like, you know, navigate and pick different songs here. I really like that. I think this is what I would use for like different song sections potentially to be able to be like, okay, hey, we're coming up on the bridge and I have a dramatically different tone I want to call up. I just hit the snapshot. Um, or maybe I could also just have, if I want to keep it simple for a volunteer, I'll just tell them like, hey, we'll just keep it on the grand and pads patch setting here for you. We don't need any fancy synths or arpeggiators or anything like that. Um, but use these snapshots to be like, Song one, song two, song three, you know, padding under the sermon or whatever. It just seems like a really quick way to change sound. So I like that a lot. This is cool. Okay, MIDI. So octave up adds an octave above any note you play. Oh, that's cool. So that means, so beforehand I have a, a piano. I'll just play one, one note for you. I'll turn the delay off so it's a little bit simpler. And then if I hit octave up, that's pretty cool. So it's adding in this this octave note above, um, which is, can make it, you know, sound nice and big, right? So. That's cool, okay. So really simple, adding these effects in. And then of course we've got the pad section. We haven't got to that yet. Okay, so this thing, I hit the on button, right? Oh man. So let's say we're, we're coming out of the sermon. I'll keep it, let's keep it in the key of C since I'm not a piano player. Ooh, that transition was nice. Listen to these transitions, right? It's going from C to F. Very nice, okay. So we'll go to C. Coming out of the sermon, and then we have, you know, tell my volunteer to just go, maybe a little bit lower. Yeah, so simple to be able to like play underneath uh, a pastor or someone praying at the end of a sermon. I can obviously control the pad or they can even just keep the pad droning for throughout the song and then easily uh, go ahead and change the, the, um, the keys throughout as well. The cool thing is there is this patch lock button though. So if I turn that on, it says tonic settings, store to patch, tap to remove. Okay, so now if I went to a different patch and I turn it off and I went back to that same patch, yeah, it turns it back on. Um, that's pretty cool. And then, okay, so this, these next and previous buttons are just kind of controlling, navigating through the patches. So let's go ahead and turn the pad off right now. What I love about this whole thing is how you can make it as complex as you want and advanced as you want, but also be as simple as you would like it to be. So I know a lot of the keyboard players and the ministries that I serve in, um, they're, they're gonna love Love this. I really like what I've seen so far, and a little birdie over here now is giving me some advice on my first impressions video to find another cool feature. This little plus icon here 
uh, what David was telling me is you can create a new patch, so I can go from blank, let's just call it Jake, and save, and wow. So now I can start adding a bunch of sounds and I can pull in things from the Sunday Keys library here. Um, so I can design that patch that you're seeing with the, the, the four or so, blah, or no, one, two, three, four, five different um, channels, tracks, whatever they call them. You can load in all those different sounds. Um, and design your own sounds and save them, save them to your library, or I can pull up a patch from a library that's already been created here. So view all patches, nice. So these are just patches from some previous set lists that he designed. I'm impressed, very impressed. I know I'm only scratching the surface of this app, but I really like what I see from my first impressions. I can't wait to spend more time in this app and just kind of mess around with it. Um, oh, I wanna, can I delete this easily? Yes, remove patch. So I don't really need, yeah. Oh, I can save it to my library and remove or just remove. I'm just gonna remove it because it's a pointless patch. Go back to the other patch here. But I'm really impressed. It's just so intuitive, very easy to use. Um, good job, David. Hey, thanks, man. This was generally, like I said, he did not spend any time even yeah, showing just, me. Just dove in. There's probably a gazillion things. Again, I, they, he's like, they're over here like, oh, he doesn't, he's not pointing this out or that out. But dude, it, it, it checks all of my boxes as a worship leader, someone, you know, building this infrastructure for a worship ministry. It just makes it so, uh, it's just so intuitive and easy to get this set up. And man, just the, the simplicity of the hardware. We've got, you know, a USB hub here, a little audio interface. That's how the sound's getting to our mixing console. So dang simple. Great job, Sunday Sounds team. I love this app. That's all I have for you guys in this video. 